hello everyone this is the first video of this series uh, here we will discuss about uh, environmental science statistics and applications of statistics in environmental issues so as all we all of us know that environment means our surroundings that influencing our growth affecting our lives affecting our surroundings like animal plants living conditions so we can say that environmental science means we are talking about air water soil uh, food wildlife and many other things which uh, which are around us according to webster dictionary statistics is the branch of mathematics that deals with collection and analysis of quantitative data according to um, Pauli statistics are numerical statement of facts in any department of inquiry placed in relationship to each other according to you and kendall by statistics we mean quantitative data of a take to marked extent by multiplicity multiplicity of causes according to crockston and cowden statistics may be defined as the science of collection presentation analysis and interpretation of numerical data so environmental statistics is the application of statistics uh, and by definition we can say uh, it is a development and application of statistical methodology to environmental issues this can be based in the natural environment or the urban environment environmental statistics is a broad discipline stretching from how and what to sample through to modeling impact on humans and ecosystem health and ultimately to provide predictions of what changes might occur in the future why statistics is important for an environmental scientist uh, so just like uh, any other field of study um where statistics plays a vital role here also in environmental issues it plays um, a very important role because it helps us to take data driven decisions for future implications use of statistics in environmental science increases rapidly from past few decades as concern increases for environment and its impact on human lives and its surroundings day by day nowadays statistics is used to address environmental issues in academia government and private organizations regulatory technological and consulting industries so by using in um, statistics in environmental science it can support us to take decisions making for natural resources like water quality air quality management uh, pollution in atmosphere and water systems effect of pollution on human health and ecosystems uncertainties in forecasting climate and weather and obviously many more uh, applications for environmental scientist there are broadly three types of studies baseline studies targeted studies and regular monitoring baseline studies intended to document the present state of the environment in order to establish future changes resulting targeted studies designed to assess the impact of plant events uh, for example construction of a dam or accidents such as oil spills regular monitoring intended to detect trends and changes in the important variables possibly to ensure that compliance conditions are being met for an industry that is permitted to discharge small amounts of pollutants into the environment in india there are various sources uh, of uh, environmental data uh, data.gov.in is the central repository for data on this topic you can assess the data by uh, clicking on the catalog segment uh, on, available on the website or you can also use sector and then you can search environment in forest and you will uh, get plenty of data you can also use apis uh, you can search for the term environment and uh, um, you might supposed to fill up the form 
uh, for downloading the data and uh, it asks you to uh, to tell the reason of downloading the data set and usage type you can also get the data from central pollution control board under ministry of environment forest and climate change government of india it's working for air quality management water quality management waste management noise pollution urban pollution it also involves in planning related to pollution control data on air water quality and noise monitoring is available at cpcb website there are various tools and techniques available in statistics which are ap applying in environmental science nowadays so um, it uh, has a long list here i am listing down some of the topics like explicit data analysis um, numerical as well as graphical probability theory sampling methods bayesian methods correlation and regression analysis time series analysis spatial modeling generalized linear models parametric and non parametric testing procedures statistic regression one thing that is important to realize here is that there is usually not a single correct way to gather and analyze data at best there may be several alternative approaches that are all about equally good at worst the alternatives may involve different assumptions and lead to the different conclusion we need to be very attentive when we are applying statistics to answer an important question now let's try to understand some of the techniques with the help of examples so if we are talking about explicit data analysis so it consists of frequency tables data visualization and descriptive statistics So suppose if I wanted to make a table which uh, which reports total number of sites covered, number of probable contaminated sites, and number of confirmed contaminated sites, that means we are doing data tabulation. Another example of data tabulation can be we are listing down the total sites, probable contaminated sites, and confirmed contaminated sites according to state. So these are examples of exploratory data analysis. We can represent the same data by using the graphs. Many a times we have to use descriptive statistics to answer some of the basic questions, as well as for data cleaning. Like, what is the suppose what is the average sulfate table in air in last five days? For that, we need to do exploratory data analysis. We have to compute some sort of average. It can be mean, it can be median, mode, or any other kind of average. But we need to compute average, which is under descriptive statistics. which state is supposed to have maximum number of contaminated sites okay so if we have a list of uh, states with uh, their um, contaminated sites and i wanted to figure out the state which is sub suspected to have maximum number of contaminated sites so again i have to compute some sort of average so here we can compute mode the maximum the state which is having a maximum frequency for contaminated sites will be the uh, state we are looking for similarly which state has maximum number of confirmed contaminated cases uh, or sites so in this case also we have to compute mode is the data on sulfate level has much variation from one day to another okay so if i have data on sulfate level for past 7 days and i wanted to know this is more or less same or there is a variation then i have to compute some sort of measure of dispersion it can be uh, simply range it can be quartile deviation it can be variance or standard deviation so it depends upon the type of data we have uh, and the nature of the data we have okay but we have to compute Uh, some sort of dispersion measure of dispersion um, and the next question can be can we assume data on nitrogen oxide is normally distributed or it is skewed so there are various ways for uh, 
stochastic the normality of the data we can simply use some um, graphs to visualize the normality of the data we can get some basic idea about it we can use descriptive statistics to to check normality of the data we can do some testing for uh, checking the normality of the data so there are various ways of doing it so one of it is eda so in a graphical representation if our data looks like a bell shaped curve or very close to bell shaped curve we can say that our data is normally distributed or approximately normally distributed or if we are going through the descriptive measures like mean median and mode so if we calculate all three statistics that means mean median and mode and all three are equal that means our data is normally distributed there are various applications of correlation testing of hypothesis and regression modeling in environmental sciences suppose is uh, if we wanted to answer is there any significant reduction in nitrogen oxide levels from day 1 to day 30 so we have to apply some sort of testing to identify the relationship between monthly concentration of major air pollutants and temperature so for that we need some sort of correlation and regression analysis to establish the relationship between temperature and air pollutants effect of environmental factors on cancer incidence tuberculosis and many other diseases risk assessment due to environmental factors risk allocation or to establish the relationship between global warming and sea level to study the relationship between temperature and plant height to compute the probability of getting diagnosed with tb with respect to kerosene uses type of workplace or ventilation uh, or any other environmental factor to study and explore the causes of climate change or to study the temporal and spatial characteristics of air quality to identify the factors responsible for pollution or for testing the goodness of fit for various pollutants to predict pollutant concentrations predictive water quality conditions study of environmental quantities over the period of time let's try to understand one application of correlation and linear regression Uh, in this table we are trying to establish the relationship between temperature and air pollutant concentration so suppose we have so2 and no2 as a pollutant and we wanted to study the uh, its relationship with temperature like with temperature the pollutant level of so2 and no2 increases or decreases okay so for that first of all we can check the trend Uh, we, uh so we ca we can use scatter plots to check the um, roughly the relationship between the pollutants and the temperature if it looks like a linear trend then we can go with a uh, simple linear regression and then uh, we can take temperature as an independent variable and the pollutant uh, one at a time as independent variable sorry dependent variable okay so here so2 will be dependent variable and temperature will be the independent variable and then we can study the relationship in linear regression three things are important intercept slope and r square okay so intercept means in the absence of x x means independent variable y means dependent variable so in the absence of x that means here in the absence of temperature what is the pollutant level for uh, for so2 this is 40 similarly for no2 in the absence of temperature this is 50 the next thing is slope slope uh, here is regression coefficient so in this equation in this linear uh, equation y is equal to a plus bx a is the intercept and b is the slope so here suppose this b value is minus 3 so um in slope there are two things one is the magnitude and other is the sign here the sign is negative that means there is a negative linear relationship between temperature and so2 concentration and its magnitude is 
So for one unit increase in temperature, the SO2 will decrease by three units. This will be the interpretation of slope in this example. Similarly, for NO2, for one unit increment in temperature, the NO2 value uh, or NO2 concentration will decrease by one unit. The another important term in linear regression is R square. So R square tells us how good our model is. So it varies between 0 and 1. 0 indicates um, poor fitting and 1 indicates good fitting. Okay, so here for SO2, this is 0 0.99. So this is very close to 1. That means uh, it's uh, fitting very well. And for NO2, it explains the only 10% variation in the data. We will discuss various statistical tools and techniques in uh, upcoming videos. Um, here are some very good references on the topic of application of statistics in environmental issues. So for better understanding of the topic, I, um, you must uh, uh, read through these uh, references. And in case of any query, please feel free to connect with me. I will be very happy to answer all your queries. Thank you, everyone.